Hello everyone, my name is Judy Bryce and I'm from JMB Educational Services Limited and I'm joined today uh, by Alana King from Educational Pathfinder. So um, welcome Alana, um, would you like to introduce yourself a bit please, thank you. Sure, thank you Judy. Uh, yes, I run a company called Education Pathfinder which helps guide parents and children on various different educational journeys. Um, I work with parents whose children are entering for school entrance exams at seven plus, but I also work with home educated children specifically in English and through book groups, which is my passion. That's great. So it sounds like, Ilana, we're kind of two opposites because you are very much into the English and I'm very much into the maths. Um, <laughs> I wish I had had somebody around like you to be able to give me some passion for books and, and for English learning because I just didn't really have that as a child. So, um, Ilana, first, shall we discuss what sort of um, home education styles there are? You, you teach the 11 plus and the 7 plus, um, but then you are also a home educator yourself and you, and you teach for home educated children. So can you explain um, to the people who might not know about the different types of home education there is? Sure, I would say there's as many types of home education as there are families who are home educating. I don't think that you can classify styles of home education. I think one of the joys of home education, a reason that many people choose it, is that they can tailor the education of their children specifically to their child. So over the last 16, 17 years that I've been home educating, I have met families who all differ completely in how they home educate. I would say there is a, a scale, a spectrum, if you like, of styles, and at one end of that would be what we call unschoolers. Mm -hmm. Their educational philosophy is that children will learn when they're interested and ready to learn, and when they express that interest, you present them with opportunities, but you don't actually ever present them with opportunities if they are not displaying an interest. There's no structure in education. In yeah, that that, that's very much at one, one end of the scale, isn't it? Yes completely child-led yes. and if the child doesn't yes. have any interest nothing happens yeah yeah absolutely. absolutely and at the other end of the spectrum would be very very structured um home educators ones who are essentially replicating school at home so their children are attending classes they might be online classes they might have tutors coming in it'll be a variety but they work to a very structured day and are following a curriculum but in between those two ends there's everything else yeah and I would say the vast majority fall somewhere in between and have picked the things that work for them yeah so how do you do it with your children I know that you've got children of varying ages some of which have now finished being home educated um, and come out the other end and you've still got younger ones still still being home educated what sort of what sort of flavor of education home education did you adopt for your children so I, I'm definitely somewhere in between those two ends. Um, I have three children. Uh, the eldest is uh, almost 20 and is just finishing his second year of university of a degree apprenticeship. The middle one is uh, 16, just finishing his first year of A-levels in a sixth form. And my youngest is 12, just finishing year eight, but he is home educated. All three of them were home educated from the beginning. Mm -hmm. They all entered or will enter school at sixth form. So we had a really long period of time with each of them mm. where I was able to develop what worked for them. And I don't know that I would specifically classify myself anywhere in the sense that I looked at each of them as an individual and I structured a program that worked for them. I would say we're probably more towards the structured end than we are towards mm -hmm. the home, uh, the unschooling end, but it will vary. We One of the joys of home education is being able to pick and choose what you feel is going to work best for your child. And that has been different for each of my children. Yeah. And I've loved being able to kind of tailor their education for each of them. They've all entered, or the two that have entered, entered the school system without a hitch, with very high GCSE grades, and for That's us, really it was a very positive experience that, good that to know. worked. Yeah, yeah, because I think some, some parents would be concerned about whether or not ch their child could ever make that transition either back to um, formal education or to it in the first place, and, and your boys have, have shown that they've been able to do that relatively without any issues and with um, 
yeah, as you say, with with good grades underneath them. So you know, it, it sounds like a very very um, <laughs> successful example of home education. It's not just them. Uh, you know, I, I can hold my children up as an example that it works, but there there are many 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 home educated children out there who make that transition mm. either at GCSE or at A level uh, quite successfully back into school. Yeah. So, Alana, why did you decide to home educate your sons? I mean, you're, you've obviously so, got a teaching background yourself. So, do, yeah. why why did you decide to to home educate them yourself and to and not be teaching yourself in a classroom anymore, um, but to be teaching your sons at home? I think it's a common answer I'll give you for teachers. Uh, I had taught in schools for a few years. I taught uh, receptions of very, very young children. This was prior to ever having children, prior to becoming pregnant. Uh, and I made the decision then. I left teaching because I didn't feel it was the best environment for the children that I was teaching, or, mm -hmm. or any children for that, for that matter. I felt that there was a better way. Uh, so I had made the decision to leave teaching, and I made the decision to home educate my children before I ever had them. You know, things are different for different families. Some some families remove their children from school partway through the journey and start to home educate for varying reasons. And it, and it can be their children just don't fit that school model. I never put my children in in the first place, so I don't I don't know if they would have fit the school model mm. or not. I just felt that I could really provide interesting, them yeah. with something better than what the school could provide. So they never entered the school system at all until they were sixteen. Mm. Yeah, and it's. It, that's that's so interesting to, that, that you you made that decision, um, you know, before you had them, um, because is the, of the people other other people I've 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 met and discussed this with mainly it's been they've their their child has started school something's gone wrong and they've decided there must be a better way for my child and then they've pulled them out at that stage but this so this is really interesting to hear that you actually came up came at it from a, a different angle of of already deciding that there would be a better way um <laughs> and uh Excuse me. that's okay <laughs> um yeah. and, and coming in from that way so yeah no re re really really interesting um so how how's the journey been for, for you as the mom as the educator the, presumably the primary educator for, for all your children um did you um did you bring um other teachers in for other subjects i mean obviously you are very much an english specialist i'm just wondering whether you brought in people you know other somebody to do art with them or, or science or something how did how did it work for you and your children so it's a really good question and, and before I answer I'll just r remind anybody who's listening that this was my journey and everybody else's journey is different so that you know this is not a blueprint for how somebody else might do it it's just how I did it mm -hmm. so certainly in the earlier years in the primary years I did not need to bring in anybody else um, yeah. I was a primary school teacher anyway absolutely really, really think same that, as me I don't yes think that's relevant though so much I think any mum can do this I don't think you need to be a primary school teacher to do it but but I wasn't teacher anyway and um, I didn't feel the need to bring in any outside help however what I did do in those primary years is present a lot of enrichment activities that wouldn't have been possible if they were in school this is one of the things that I mm. love the most about our home ed journey I live in London and um, at the time I started home educating which was um, 16 17 years ago uh, there wasn't a lot on offer then for home educated children in terms of groups and things but I could create opportunities so uh, for instance we would do museum visits that would be the same school trips that schools would take accessing the educational program mm -hmm. that a museum Museum had but we would book in as a group of home educators and I you know I would organize that so there were things so my children got to do museum trips every two to three weeks school children got to do them once a year so yes so I, you know one of the real benefits of home ed was was and, and living in London at the time was um was having access to things like that so through primary years that was a lot of what we did uh, a lot of experiences in secondary years it does change and there becomes um, a need if you are following a more structured approach like I was to do more work and certainly that was the case and as we approached GCSEs um, I did bring in more classes you're right I never put in outside help for English because that is my area so I took them through English myself but um, but for maths and sciences and things like this I did use um, some of the other teachers that are out there specifically for home educated children but even 
even through the secondary years, what was so wonderful for all of my children was, again, this enrichment. And it's been very different for each, for each of them. They've had very different interests, but being able to uh, follow their interests, think about where it is they wanted to uh, end up and to be able to create and present opportunity for them beyond the academic has been phenomenally useful both in terms of their development but also in terms of jobs so my eldest um, he applied to universities and had interviews and he also applied for degree apprenticeships which is what he ended up doing they all involved an interview and in those interviews they really were not interested so he, he had like a stars and they didn't care everybody who was applying had a star so what mm -hmm. differentiated him from anybody else they weren't interested in the academics they were interested in what else he had done because I had spent so many years being able to enrich what mm. he did and he wasn't stuck to a school timetable so he had the time to follow these interests those are what he talked about in these interviews and those are what got him the offers and yeah. I think you know that that's something that has just been so valuable about all of their journeys that I wouldn't replace for anything no <laughs> I mean it, it's it sounds like it has worked absolutely brilliantly for you and your family and I think it's a shining example of of how ed how home education can work really really well um so moving on how is your home education different that you did with your children to what you then offer when you're teaching as a home education a tutor for other children so is there a difference in what you you did with your own children to what you then do as as a as a teacher educator tutor whatever we like to call ourselves at this point with, with if you're dealing with other home educated children it's a good question, and I would say that my educational philosophy remains the same, whether we're talking about my own children or children who I, whose parents I'm guiding through the seven plus competitive entrance exams or home educated children. My philosophy has always been about inspiring excellence, and inspiring excellence to me means bringing out the absolute maximum potential of that child. Now that potential is going to vary mm. child to child. It's not that there is one particular level, but in enabling any child, whatever journey they're on, to reach that maximum potential. So when so I did that with my own children. And when you look at the classes that I teach, so I, I teach um, English classes to home educated children of a variety of ages in specific skills. So it might be creative writing, or it might be analyzing texts, or it might be poetry. There's a variety. And then I teach book groups where um, children have read a particular book together that I've assigned and we come together to, to discuss it. In all of those, I get a real variety of home educators and mm. they can be very structured or they might be unschoolers, they might have neurodiversities. It varies enormously. And to me, it really doesn't matter because in any class that I'm teaching, I'm looking at each of those children and I'm thinking, what is it that they can do? So if I'm teaching a concept like creative writing, what each of them produces from what I've taught will be very different. And that's fine. Mm. I'm looking at bringing out the best that that, that particular they can do. child yep. can do. Now, my classes are very interactive. There's a lot of discussion, particularly the book groups, but also in the English classes. So they suit children who perhaps aren't a fan of the written word mm. and they they're much better in discussing than they are putting pen to paper that doesn't mean they don't put pen to paper so in the English classes they do have homework and they mm. do have to write but they don't ever share that with the rest of the group only I ever see that so it allows them to kind of be who they are and be praised for what they do without any comparison to what everybody else is doing. Mm, and I that think sounds brilliant. when we look at a school, it's very difficult within a class to not compare. Yeah. Whether a teacher is trying not to compare, whether the children are being encouraged not to compare, they're all seeing what everybody else is doing so mm. those comparisons are there that that sense of who's at the top who's at the middle who's at the bottom even if it's not explicitly stated is there my, my students never know that <laughs> <laughs> because because they're all just in the class together and they're not really seeing each other's each other's work hmm. so we're, you, you're saying that they don't see each other's work was that the case when you were um, still doing this all in person or is this all more now that um, like me you're now sort of fully online 
it's always been online for me. Has so it? Way, way back in the depths of time, long before COVID existed, um, I, I taught these online. Uh, home educators, as a group, as a community, embraced online classes long before the rest of the world. Yes. Home educators <laughs> are diversely spread geographically. They may have issues that mean they want to be at home more than being out. So that for all sorts of reasons, online classes were adopted very early on mm. <laughs> for home educators. I think we were the pioneers of that kind of teaching method. So they've never been in person. They, yeah. they were designed as online classes and they continue to be online yeah. classes. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's interesting because um, I only managed to go um, online at, at the point of COVID. I had wanted to, for a long time, be online. And I had been unable to get people to want to do it. They just wanted me to come to their houses and drink their coffee, teach their child at the kitchen table. And mm -hmm. I could not convince people otherwise. So mm -hmm. for me, um, take aside, you know, the horrific situation of COVID. And um, um, for me, it's enabled my business to, to grow in the direction that I actually wanted it to, to move in in the first place, because I was able to then go fully online and I've got no intention of ever going back to in person mm -hmm. um, because I was a I've been able to develop um, really engaging online lessons that work brilliantly with using bit paper and zoom so um, you know nothing like the sort of very stale um, things that um, schools were f being forced to to provide um you know against I, I mean i know from my own uh, family i know that you know it was against sort of people's uh, better judgment they didn't want to teach in that way but that was how they had to teach um but for me you know i've been able to really run with it develop systems that work brilliantly and i have no intention of going back mm -hmm. um but yeah it was it was such a I was frustrated for because for a long time I really wanted to do the online side because I live um, I used to live well I originally start again I originally came from uh, from Somerset I then lived in Staffordshire on Staffordshire Derbyshire border for over 20 years and then three years ago we moved back to um, slightly different bit of Somerset and um, but in all places I've been in sort of really quite rural areas so very very different setup for you in in your right in the middle of London um, <laughs> lifestyle so for me I was driving around the Somerset countryside um, until a year ago um, in the rain in the snow um, driving and you know it could be sort of half an hour drive between each each um, pupil and it meant I could only teach a very very few children I could only teach them after school and I could only teach them in this basically really only two time slots each afternoon so that meant I could only teach 10 pupils but the moment I've come online I teach children all over the country and um, I'm also able to, you know, I don't actually do them completely back to back because there's always teething problems, uh, you know, people need to go to the toilet, all this kind of thing. So, you know, I always have a little bit of a, of a gap, but, you know, I start and do another lesson, quick break, another lesson, quick break. And, I, and I've also been able to teach um, children um, who are home educated and during the day. Um, I had just started with one family with three children who are actually reasonably local to me um, and I had actually only had one lesson with them in March, beginning of March last year when Covid struck. So actually I've, apart from that, what, that very first lesson with each of them, um, I, I have taught that family online. Um, I also have another family. That, these are most of my one-to-one -one families. Um, I've got another family that um, I have um, who's home educated. And they do have, I can see that between the two families, they have quite different um, sort of ethos is about, about, about it as well. So, you know, I can see that. And But Yes, it's really interesting that the, the online community for, for home ed is streets ahead, well years, as you say, years ahead of the the after school tutoring. Um, so you yeah. imagine what you were saying about your long drive and living in a rural location, but imagine that from the other side as, as home educators who are having to bundle children up into a car and drive from location to location yeah, absolutely. and access 
social groups and then tutors mm. and so it, it wasn't really very practical ever no. for home educators no, unless I'm... you lived in an area that had a, a very thriving home education community or perhaps in London or something like that then you were going to need to be travelling so yes. it needed to be online yes it, not everything that makes so much sense yes they're not yeah I mean I know that the family um, that my first family they um, they they were most days as you say bundling in the car and driving um, from rural Somerset up to Bristol because there's a very th thriving home ed um, scene in, in Bristol and they were they were driving up there to, to, to be able to meet with the other children to do the other, do the classes with the other children but in Bristol but that was a sort of a I don't know 30 40 minute drive for them to get there um, so I would imagine you know from their point of view actually that they, they they went then online with with most of those groups um, so yeah it, it, it is it really when you put it like that as to why they would be prepared to go online that there's a lot of reasons why it works that way absolutely yeah um so how do you think that the landscape of of home ed has, has changed since you you first started your sort of 16 17 years ago with your first boy <laughs> <laughs> because i mean obviously at that point there, there wouldn't have been any online tuition would no, there but no no that all came much later i mean the last 16 17 years have changed dramatically is the short answer to your question when i began all those years ago and i was still it was london um there were uh, home educators even then mm -hmm. um but there was very limited groups to meet up they tended to be social groups um mm -hmm. rather than academic groups so people would meet to meet other children and families and chat and play and things mm -hmm. like that and there weren't that many of them um i would also say that the vast majority of home educators that i met at that time had made the decision to home, edu home educate for for a very specific philosophical reason as against pulling their child out of school because of problems in the school. It was a very different reason. Over those years, things changed and more and more families uh, began to home educate and there were more and more opportunities and groups. Then if we go all the way to now, uh, it's unrecognizable. Uh, the numbers of home educators are huge um, and really there's everything out there now because obviously what you do and what I did all those years ago is when I didn't find a group that I wanted I created a group so yeah. you know we make those opportunities for ourselves and when you you know do that exponentially and the number of, of home educated families there are the opportunities and groups you can join are vast and different so I'd say what home educators have now that I didn't have back then was choice, is choice. Mm. So whatever your style, whatever your philosophy, whatever it is you're looking for, whether it's social or creative or academic, you will find something out there, whether it's in person or online, that will fit what you need. So it's a great time now to be a home educator mm. because there is so much choice out there for you. Yeah. Do you feel that um, once I say this is, I quite use the word, this is all over, who knows when it, when all of this COVID thing will actually really be all over? I mean, a year ago we would have thought it would have been finished by now and it, it isn't. Um, do you think that um, by a lot of children, well, all children having from school having to be um, virtually schooled or, or not <laughs> from their own schools, um, that that has seen as a massive surge in people going, do you know what? I'm going to do this properly and we're going to do this and we're going to deregister. Do, do you think that there, ha do you feel that there has been a massive surge in people who are actually going to do this properly long term, um, you know, in, in the same way as you did, you know, all the way up and you know all the way up through school um do, do you think people will will do that or do you think it's something that some the people are just going to jump on for a bit do it for a year and then go do you know what actually let's send them back to school i'm i'm, I'm curious because i just don't um, know enough about the yeah. how, how that would work so there has been a surge absolutely covid has created a shift but not for the reason that you identified. Oh, right. Uh, the shift has come primarily with 
neurodiverse children whose parents were struggling through, keeping them in school, hoping against hope that the fit would happen and things would get better. Those children then in lockdown thrived yes. because they were out of the school environment and for a prolonged period of time. And those families had that awakening moment that sort of said, then why am I sending this child back? Look at what it's like when he's not forced to fit that system. Absolutely. So those families, many of them haven't returned. Mm. Now, what you were talking about in terms of seeing the online school experience and thinking, okay, well, this isn't great. I can do it better. I think most of those parents just wanted their kids to go back to school to what it was normally. So mm. I, I don't think that created the shift. I think there were a whole number of families who were on the verge but never took that step. It's quite a big step yes, to take. Yes, it's a massive risk, isn't the it? System and you've yeah. agreed your children are going to be in the system. To remove them, even if you feel it's the right thing, to do that final step and remove them is, is a courageous thing to do. And I think many families hadn't taken that step and COVID actually allowed them to take that step. So the answer is yes, I think there has been quite a large shift or a large surge, but I think it is very much within a particular group mm. of families. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting because um, the majority of the children that I teach um, are neurodiverse. That you know, that's my specialism now. I've come away from from just being primary. Um, I you know moved from being a primary teacher into um, you know primary tutor. Um, then because of my my previous um, my previous job and and previous degree um, in the engineering, I was able to. People say, well, can you? He's a little bit older now. Can you still tutor him? Yes, I can. And and you know, and I tutored up into um, into GCSE, and I also worked um, in the school that we lived in. Um, I also worked um, in the math support um, up for GCSE in that, and and then so I've sort of gone from primary to, to maths, maths to also older maths, but then um, very much m where where my passion lay was in the neurodiverse side of that. So um, you know that that's into the dyscalculia and and all the other sort of associated issues that mean that uh, neurodiverse children can find it particularly hard to cope with maths taught in the way that it is taught in 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 some well quite a lot of schools they really need it visual they really need it practical and they need they don't need it in the abstract and there's there's a shift often the moment the children are up into the junior school age that you lose all the uh, hands-on manipulatives doing things in a visual way and suddenly everything's just just numbers on the page and and that doesn't work for neurodiverse children so um you know that's how i sort of ended up in in that pathway and um so I do still teach um, some children who um, aren't neurodiverse, but the vast majority of the children I teach are neurodiverse. Um, and, you know, I, I can see what you're saying, that actually this thing of people saying it, it really wasn't working for their child at school. Yeah, it probably wasn't. Um, and it is a really courageous step to step away. Um, um, and especially if you're getting conflicting advice to know that it it is okay to step away and you will be able to support your child and you will be able to probably get them better support from home than you could in school um but again it, it comes down it comes down to finances as well doesn't it so um because it's, it's a really there is a sacrifice yeah big sacrifice and, for, for homeschooling yeah, your child yeah, I isn't mean, there you, you cannot both work full-time you can't have two full-time working parents out of the home and home educate particularly when children are younger so um, so that it is a it's a lifestyle choice mm. in many ways um, a parent needs to be available that doesn't mean a parent needs to be available 24 hours a day or, or even during the daytime school hours and a lot of home educating families find very creative ways around this and mm. parents will work um, together to find to support the children or take the children to different 
different um, events. Obviously, with, with online type learning, that's really helpful. And the, the older the child gets, so, you know, my youngest, I said, is 12, almost 13, and um, he has his own schedule of work to do and things. And I can work in the home, uh, and he can work in, in mm. the home as well, in different rooms. And, you know, we've got good broadband. I was going to say, as long as you've got good broadband, and, uh, you're going to be okay. Excellent, we've got excellent broadband, which I think is a necessity. But, uh, and so, you know, those things can go along side by side. Mm. But the younger the children are, that's harder. But then that's true of life in general. When your children are quite young, even in primary school, it's, you know, you, you either have outside help, so wraparound school care of some kind, or you have to be available after school. So yeah. it's not like if your children are in school when they're young, you can work full time. So no, it's, it's, it's you know, incredibly hard. Yeah. But when you have young children, you have young children. <laughs> That's the yeah. reality. Yes, and, and absolutely. There is no that. But yes, uh, home educators as a whole have had to make sacrifices to allow um, the, the lifestyle that's needed to, to home educate their children, definitely. Yeah, it's, 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 it's um, it must be um, a big thing to, to take that step and say, actually, I'm not, you know, for, for a, a Primarily, it's, you know, it's nearly always going to be a mother to say, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to work full time. I'm going to have to try and find some entrepreneurial ways of making yeah. some money um, in yeah. order to be able to be there all, all the time with, with my child. Yeah, a very, a very big step. And as you said, a very mm. courageous step to, to make that make that leap. Um, and, you know, it's, it's one that, you know, many of us, you know, won't we're brave enough to make <laughs> um so yeah well but just sorry judy yeah. just to pick up on that though but so i i mean i, I come across this a lot obviously i meet a lot of, of families uh, who are home educated in both my work and in in just with my child and um you know you do get comments like um you you're really brave or wow or it's somehow holding you up as you've done something really great that maybe they haven't done or they should have mm. done sooner or whatever and I, you know i am not somebody who says every family should home educate and if you don't home educate or you didn't home educate your children if they're mm. older now that you have somehow failed them mm. I, I don't believe that to be true at all i think that it's it's a decision that's made on a very individual basis individual for the child, what's best for them, but not just the child. And, you know, I'm not somebody who only focuses on the child. It has to be right for the whole family because it really does affect the entire family. It's not a decision that only affects the child. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot in everyone's own circumstances that has to be looked at as to whether this is going to be a positive or a negative experience. And I would never say home education is positive for all because mm -hmm. I don't believe that to be any truer than school is positive <laughs> for all i don't yeah, believe there is a one size fits all approach no absolutely i mean that's that's the thing that i i really feel that that there really isn't a one size fits all and anybody who tries to squash square pegs into round holes it does not work and right. and even mm -hmm. if a child superficially manages to cope with that in school um they're probably really masking their own feelings and actually that usually has then a quite a big knock-on effect for their mental health so you know even if they mm. sort of quote co quote so you cope at school you know probably they come home and they 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 have really not coped during the day, even if they've superficially Absolutely. seen to shake. And it goes back to my philosophy in general, inspiring excellence, having Absolutely. each child reach their potential. The question to me will always be, will that child reach their top potential in school or will that child reach their top potential at home? And that's not going to be the same answer for every no. child. So what's right for the child is the environment that will allow them to reach excellence. And that is going to be different for all of them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think realizing that, that every child is different, every family is different, and every situation is different. And, and also, you know, until you, that, that, that old saying about until you've walked in somebody's footsteps you don't understand that i can't can't remember the quote but you know I, th I think that that's very true and and you know we don't actually know what's going on in other people's lives or you know in other people's heads um and and you know if, if people have made a decision that they feel is right um for them at that point you know that's that's the one to go with and then then it's about 
as you say, um, unlocking the potential of the child from from that point. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's been really, really interesting to talk to you in more depth about my home education. Obviously, we've talked a lot before, um, but not in this sort of formal way. Um, really great. Thank you so much, Alana. Thank um, you, Judy. <laughs> and if you'd like to just uh, say a little bit about um, your 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 business and where people can find you and everything sure. that would be great so my website is uh, www.educationpathfinder.co.uk and it has a home education section on there where you can find the courses that I run the book groups which is my real passion and I get super excited about yep. <laughs> um, and and my other services which relate more to private school entry but um, everything's on there in the one place information about me um, and you can contact me through my website contact page as well if you've got any questions I would be happy to help just a signpost as well for some some home educators who might be listening to this and maybe new mm -hmm. um, the first thing I would say is join your local home ed Facebook group there are loads of them so mm -hmm. there's no point me telling you the London ones that I belong to because you might not be in London but yep. wherever you are in the country you will find a home ed Facebook group for that's your true <laughs> there are ones near me contact. <laughs> yes absolutely and it's your first point of contact for being able to meet other families so I'm not talking about the academics here just to get out there and see what other home educators are in your area and to socialize you'll find those through these Facebook groups and you know I'm still a home ed mum I may be a teacher but I still have a home educated child and I belong to my local groups and that is absolutely how we make contact and mm. arrange events and meet up with others I mean we had a long period of not doing that obviously due to COVID but it's all starting up again now mm -hmm. so things are beginning to return to some sense of normality so it's a great time if you are new to home ed to just go out and actually meet some others yep that was great advice thank you so much for joining me and um and we'll talk again soon thanks very much bye, Judy. Thanks. thank you bye